We celebrate all of that because our Lord came into the world to suffer and die for our sins so that we might have forgiveness and life in his name. Today we are celebrating our Christmas Day celebration. And so if you'll notice in the, uh, on your bulletin tab, there are some designated stanzas for some of the hymns, so be sure and kind of follow that uh, as we go along. And today, because it's Christmas and we want to celebrate, we're also going to sing some hymns during the distribution, uh, or portions of hymns during the distribution. So take note of that as well. We're using the order of service on page 184 today. Let us arise and sing. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me and forgive my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, 
I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the Nativity of our Lord is from Exodus chapter 40. In the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames and put in its poles and raised up its pillars. And he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent over it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark and put the poles on the ark and set the mercy seat above on the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. The epistle is from Titus, chapter 3. For when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. A holy day has dawned upon us. Come, all you nations, and worship the Lord. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men,
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Prince of Peace, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we celebrate the birth of life because that is who Christ Jesus is. He's not simply the holiest among those who think themselves as holy. He's not simply a man of historical renown. Such understatements fail to recognize Christ Jesus as life. They don't recognize him as life eternal. Jesus is the life of all the living. Through him all creation came into being, and without him nothing came into being. He is the life of all people. In him is life. And yet even more, our Lord Jesus Christ is the life of all who live even though they pass through the jaws of death. For whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. If there's no Jesus, then there's no life. To have life, you must have Jesus. Jesus and life are so intertwined that he is life. When you receive and take in Jesus, you receive and take in life. That's why only Jesus can say, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. We can now see that Mary, the Blessed Virgin, gave birth to life itself. And yet Jesus is not just any life. He is life in the flesh. That's why we rejoice. Christmas is the birthday of life. Yes, we know that death still lurks in the shadows and, and stalks us. Death still haunts us, seeking to frighten us into sin to, and lure us to live in our self-serving ways. But death cannot hold a candle to life. For the Word Himself, Jesus Christ, has given us His Word when He says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though he dies. Indeed, everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? That's what life, that's what Jesus asks you. That's the crux of all reality. That you, through faith, recognize life as he is not as you wish him to be. For you, know, you only get real life from life himself, not in the Lord of your own making. For you only receive life as he gives himself to you. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Christ, our life. Now, in your worldly thinking, you believe that life is what you make it. And so you work hard to get the most out of life. You fear that life may pass you by. A quiet anxiety stirs within that you will not live a life to the fullest. And so you hedge your bets, trying to be both of God and of the world. But life didn't enter the world on Christmas to take, a, take life away from you. Instead, he comes that you may have life and you may have it to an abundance. Jesus didn't become man just to be a man. 
No, Jesus, life himself, came to lay down his life. For no one has greater love than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. And yet Jesus came to be more than just a friend. He's more than someone to turn to in a crisis. He's more than someone to whom you voice your your gripes and your wishes. He is your life. But to be that for you, he had to be born in the flesh. He had to give up his life to give it for you. But more than that, He gave up his life to live within you. That you may have life, that you may have it in abundance. Our Lord Jesus Christ was in the world, and the world was made through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, but his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. Did you hear that? In Christ, we receive another birth. In Christ, we are are born anew. Christmas isn't only the birth of life, the birth of Jesus, but also your own birth, your new birth, through life, by life, in life. Our Lord and our life was born not simply to take on flesh like yours with all its grief and pain, No, our Lord and life also seeks to be born in your flesh, that he may live in you and in your life as you live in his. Yes, today is about Jesus, but it's also about you, your life, which is hidden with Christ in God. Where is it hidden? It's hidden in Christ. And how? By this new birth, this being born of God, which takes place through the water and the word and water of holy baptism. Through the Holy Spirit working through the word in the water, Jesus now lives in you and you in him. It's as Jesus says, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot see the reign, the kingdom of God. This is how life himself describes your life in him. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. May we then, with a leaping heart and a full-throated voice, give praise and thanks to God the Father through his Son in the Holy Spirit. For it is in his vast love for us, the true and only God hasn't left us dead in our trespasses and sins. Instead, he has brought us into the life of Christ Jesus. And that life 
began when life himself became flesh and sojourned among us. Through baptism, with the eyes of faith, we now get to gaze upon his glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Today, here and now, you get to taste and see that your Lord is gracious. So understand and believe the worth of what you will receive. For you don't just receive any old life. No, you receive life himself in his true body and blood, who gives to you his own holiness, integrity, and righteousness. So come now. Our Lord invites you to receive life, to abide in him as he abides in you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We arise and sing our offertory. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. In our prayers today, we want to include Daryl Woodward and also Katie Ognoski. Let us pray. Lord God, you reign over all the earth. We lift up our voices and sing for joy to you in celebration of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preserve this delight among your people throughout the church year. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. send forth men to publish your peace and bring us your good news of happiness. Keep them faithful to declare your gracious reign in Christ. Bless the work of missionaries at home and abroad, that all the ends of the earth may see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, the great mystery of the Incarnation was first believed and proclaimed by common men and women, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. Give us confidence to tell the joyful message of our Savior's birth, life, death, and resurrection that your spirit may work the miracle of faith as he wills. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, guide all who administer and judge our laws in this land. Preserve us in justice and truth, and make us faithful citizens, honoring those in authority over us. Wherever rulers spurn your calling to serve justly, are hostile to your truth, or persecute your people, Turn them from their evil and protect your church. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Amen. grant healing, peace, patience, and faith that endures to all who suffer sickness in mind or body, to all homebound, and to any who ask our prayers. Help the sick and suffering, especially Keith, Barb, Pastor Darren Court, Ed, Harold, Pat, Laura, Janine, Dan, Braden, Brandon, Vernon, Rihanna, Mary, Rachel, 
Darren, Daryl, Katie, and all the victims of the tornadoes and fires. Surround them with your love in Christ, and according to your gracious will, heal them. Comfort all those who mourn, especially the family of Bernita, and fill their hearts with the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, the great love that laid your son in a manger also lays his flesh and blood before us in bread and wine. Grant us grace to bow our hearts before him with all those in heaven and on earth who adore him, that we may receive his forgiveness and life with repentance and joy. Let all who come to the sacrament of the altar this day see their salvation in the very body and blood of Christ given them to eat and to drink. Let all return home like blessed Simeon, well prepared to depart in peace. Lord, in your mercy, in, your in the birth of your Son, you have called people from all times and places into the body of Christ, his church. We give you thanks for all the believers who have gone before us, especially who have been with us during Christmas's past and now live with you. Give us a sure confidence in your promise of resurrection and eternal life, and bring us at last together with them into your presence at the full coming of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of your Son, the Word become flesh, the Savior of the nations, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is 
It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you, both body and soul, unto true, in true faith, unto life everlasting. Amen. Go now in his peace. Amen. to the Lord for he is good. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his count countenance and give you his peace.
blessed Christmas to each and every one of you. Just a couple of announcements, a reminder that there is a, a special offering plate in the rear for uh, helping the tornado victims. Uh, if you care to uh, contribute to that, it's back there. Also, a reminder that the Stewardship Committee and the elders would like to have a uh, special kind of meeting on uh, January 13th, that's a Thursday at 6.30, uh, for, especially for those who attended the workshop for the small town and uh, rural and small town uh, mission, uh, so that we can kind of bounce some ideas off each other and see where we can uh, best apply those uh, some ideas to uh, our work here at Zion in Wilton. So please put that on your calendar to attend uh, that meeting. Anyone else who didn't attend the workshop and would like to look at it or, or review it, I do have a flash drive with it all on there and you're welcome to pick that up at any time. Uh, any other announcements that need to be made today? We will be having services next Sunday uh, once again and uh, celebrate the new year with the pagans <laughs> because our new year began with Advent already. So God's richest blessings to all of you.